Welcome back, movie lovers. Today we are diving into the eerie world of Darkwood House, where the mysterious nursery man lurks in the shadows. Join us as we recap the spine-chilling tale of Marion Kelly's quest to uncover the truth behind the missing children of Darkwood House. Will she be able to outsmart the nursery man and bring the children back to safety? Let's find out together in this thrilling recap of Children of Darkwood House. The movie begins in a small town in 1860. We see a house in the middle of the forest. In this house, a woman named Florence lives with her three children. One day, the weather is very bad, and as it was the time in 1860, there is no electricity. That's why these people use candles. Even today, Florence is sitting in her room with her three children. Suddenly, she has to go downstairs. Then she sees something behind her, which is covered with a white cloth. She gets very worried when that white cloth is going to her children's room. She gets scared. When Florence follows it, she doesn't see anyone. But when she comes to her children's room, her son is missing from there. She asks her daughter. She says that a black man took him. She thought that her daughter was scaring her. She goes downstairs to find her son. She asks her maid to find her son. Then she hears a noise from her children's room. When she goes to her children's room and sees, she doesn't find either of her children. She is very scared. She starts searching her children's room crazily. Her maid comes to her and tells that she didn't find her children anywhere. Then Florence sees a white cloth behind her. The one behind that cloth was laughing scarily. She removed the cloth, but nobody was there. This strange scenario continued for three months. A woman who specialized in paranormal investigations, skilled in ghostly interactions, was helping a man whose son was also missing. Florence reached out for assistance, but initially faced refusal. Heartbroken, Florence's children remained lost. Another paranormal investigator, Kelly, with her unique approach, inquired about Florence's presence. Florence explained how her children vanished three months ago, and she believed a ghost known as the nurseryman in her home was involved. Despite initially disbelieving her children's claims about the nurseryman, Florence now suspected the ghost took her children. She was convinced they were still alive as she heard their eerie laughter and her youngest daughter's cries. Kelly, moved by Florence's account, agreed to assist her. The next day, they went to Florence's residence. Florence went the extra step of covering all the windows of her house with cloth because she could see a ghostly figure in the glass. Kelly removes the cloth from the glass and she can't see anything. It's revealed that the house was the ancestral home of Florence's late husband. A few years ago, her husband passed away. Kelly inquires about the place where Florence hears her children's voices the most. Florence mentions it's the children's room. Kelly then takes out her divining rod, a tool that enables her to communicate with spirits. As Kelly enters the children's room, she unexpectedly feels as if someone has slapped her. Addressing the children, Kelly asks them to make their presence known if they are present. That's when the ABC block scattered and tumbled down, forming words. The word here indicated their presence. Suddenly, the divining rod in her grasp grew scorching hot, searing her hands. The scene transitions to Kelly's house where her son was also present. She informs her son about Florence's situation and requests him to fetch some books. Her son then hands her a letter from Florence, stating her reluctance to reside in her own house due to the haunting memories of her children and the eerie occurrences witnessed by Kelly. Despite Florence's warning to steer clear of the case, Kelly is determined to unravel the mystery. A week later, Kelly moves into Florence's house and unveils the cloth covering the windows. Standing before the mirror, she gazes intently without blinking. As a precaution, she sprinkles holy powder outside the children's room to contain any lingering spirits. Additionally, she hangs multiple bells as a protective measure. Following the ritual from a book, Kelly attempts to peer into the other world through the mirror. To her astonishment, she spots a figure seated on a chair within the mirror's reflection, sensing the presence of Florence's daughter. The ghostly presence of the nurseryman, who had returned to her room after wandering around, persistently tried to frighten Kelly. Despite his attempts to scare her, Kelly firmly told him that he couldn't intimidate her. 
One night, Kelly heard crying coming from the children's room as she drifted off to sleep. Startled, she discovered a eerie doll in the room. The following day, while looking at her neck in the mirror, she noticed peculiar marks and saw blocks that read, I can. As a precaution, Kelly placed coins outside the children's room to protect herself from the spirit. Uncovering a drawing by the nurseryman that had an A scribbled behind it, Kelly's son later informed her about an old woman who previously resided in the same house now owned by Florence. At the old woman's suggestion, Kelly met with her and learned about the frightening encounters the old woman had with the same spirit. The old woman disclosed that the spirit had caused her brother's disappearance and continues to haunt her to this day. Recognizing a drawing of the nurseryman dropped by Kelly, the old woman identified it as her brother's work. The woman recounts how her brother disappeared and no one believed him when he tried to share his experience. Kelly inquires about ways to stop the spirit, but the old woman reveals that there is no solution. Seven years prior, a man approached her seeking help as his children had vanished while residing in the same house. This man turned out to be Florence's husband, even though Florence's own children had disappeared only three months prior. The reason behind the husband's visit to the woman seven years ago remains a mystery. Before departing, the old woman discloses a chilling revelation. The spirit marked her before killing those it targeted. Despite the warning, Kelly decides to stay, prompting the old woman to advise her to leave for her safety. Ignoring the caution, Kelly informs Florence about the old woman's warnings and revelations. Florence berated herself upon learning the truth because she had doubted her own children's claims. She revealed to Kelly that the spirit had signaled her husband's death and had also shown her the same sign, prompting her to flee the house. Kelly returned home after receiving some books from her son that were authored by Florence's late husband, who was a former university professor. Together, Kelly and her son delved into the books from Darkwood House throughout the night, yet found no answers. Suddenly, Kelly's son felt a presence behind him, causing him to flee in fear. Through the writings of Florence's husband, Kelly unraveled the unsettling reality. The spirit, known as the nurseryman, tormented him since childhood. Despite attempting to confront the entity after his first children vanished, his subsequent children also disappeared, leading him to marry Florence in the hopes of overcoming the malevolent force. Florence was the third wife of the man, prepared to confront the spirit once more before his untimely death and the subsequent disappearance of Florence's children. Grasping these revelations, Kelly ventured into the children's room where the nurseryman's spirit continued to intimidate her. Upon sharing the distressing news with Florence, the emotional weight became too much for her to bear, prompting Kelly to have her admitted to the hospital. Upon returning to Florence's home, Kelly's son visited and found himself drawn to the room where Kelly had placed protective coins. Removing one of the coins, he heard the sound of children crying, but no one was present when he called for Kelly, discovering the door abruptly closed. Meanwhile, Florence tragically took her own life. Undaunted, Kelly returned to the house to confront the spirit, shattering all the windows and demanding it to release her son, offering herself in exchange. Discovering a method in a book to free a tormented spirit by sanctifying and burying their bones, Kelly obtained a skull from the room. As she prepared to bury it, she was rendered unconscious by a spirit, causing an inferno to engulf Florence's house. Despite Kelly's son successfully burying the skull and the spirit's demise, Kelly's body being consumed by the flames, a man appeared beside Kelly and lifted her, with her son watching in anguish. Kelly's son followed the man as he carried his mother, only to find her lifeless body upon reaching her. In a heartbreaking turn of events, Kelly was revealed to be deceased, and her son tearfully gathered her and departed. The one who dared face the malevolent spirit ultimately perished, but succeeded in vanquishing the entity. The man who extended his hand to Kelly was revealed to be the spirit of her late husband, coming to escort her to the afterlife. With this conclusion, the tale of the film draws to a close.